Okay, here we are. Hello, everybody, and Happy New Year. We Happy haven't year. seen each other this year. Hope everything, everybody's fine, doing well. Today, I, I chose a player that Sophie specifically requested. Yes, yes she asked me to, to see some games of Bent Larson, so I, I looked for some attacking games of his. Although I didn't really have him as an attacking player, so it was not really... You're not going to see the type of attacks you've seen so far, but... <laughs> But you are going to see some attacking games, so it will be it will be fun. Great, and uh, I can see that Scripture Arts already wrote, as uh, he usually does. He wrote a short introduction that Ben Larson was known for his imaginative and unorthodox style of play. He was the first Western player to pose a serious challenge to the Soviet Union's dominance in chess. And uh, and then he is from Denmark. <laughs> then he's from Denmark. Yes, he's that's why the Denmark. special request. Yes. <laughs> That's why we also wanted him here. And it's good to see we have Harish and we have Piyush. I remember I can recall so many of these names. It's good. Yes. And Radu, we are going to read both chats. So don't worry, you can uh, uh, write anywhere. And yes, we will just begin the lecture in one moment. <laughs> We've just started, so don't worry. <laughs> Let's chit chat more chess. Yeah, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yes. So, well, Bent Larsen from Sophie's country, and he he had this imaginative style, as Harish was saying. Uh, he also played these openings. I remember, um, like the bird opening and the Dutch opening, that were not so uh, common those days. He kind of made them popular again. And let's see some of his games, no? We're going to start with some tactics first, as usual. A few yeah. tactics to warm up. Here, Ben Larson is white. So let's see. How are we going to play here? What are we going to do with white? And so because I'm told that it's a tactic, I'm going to look <laughs> for <laughs> moves that look tactical. Um, OK. Can we? Well, there's a check on G7, but that can be captured in so many ways that it doesn't really look very convincing. But maybe we could take an F5. Uh, and then we have to <laughs> see what happens if you just take back. Yeah. There's a check here on B7. And yeah. then if you put something in between, then we have three pieces. So we can take with the rook and then if the rook take back, it's going to be checkmate. Yeah. Yeah. This was pretty easy, but I thought that the idea of spotting queen b7 was important. It's not really... Yeah, it's, it's, it can be a tricky move to see. Long move on the yeah. other side of the board. So bishop takes f5 is you, the move. You got it as well. It's nice. Yes, and I see people on the Twitch chat as well. Bishop takes, queen takes, and then queen takes b7. That's right. And here, here black resigned um, because there's no no way to stop the mate. No, knight g7 or rook, uh, what Sophie was saying is rook g7 is mate. Yeah. Okay, let's see more. I hope I'm not going to get my next one ruined. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Almost ruined. <laughs> It's white to play here. Yeah, it's okay. It's yeah. Larsen versus Gligoric, this game. Okay, so once again, the king is on the, uh, in the corner, not having that many options. Let's see. This time the G file is, uh... okay, this is a bit more tricky. It's white to move, right? It's white to move, yes. Yeah, this is a bit more tricky because you have this bishop on h6 and rook on h3. You have ideas of discovered check, but kind of have to see if anything works, no? Yeah, it can only really make sense of doing a discovered check if it's going to be fast. So maybe we could put the bishop in g5 and then take an f6 maybe afterwards. But king g7, no? King bishop g5 and king g7. And then if I take here, he can take back, take, take. 
So we get the king out a little bit, but we also don't have that many pieces left to yeah. make checkmate. Okay, so if we don't want him to go to g7, <laughs> we could consider putting the bishop here. Um, then he only has one move, which is going here. But... But is that okay? <laughs> <laughs> Because then our bishop is hanging. In. Yeah. Uh, of course, we could take this bishop, but it's just going to be an exchange. Mm. Maybe we could push the g pawn, saying that if he takes the bishop, we're going to take an f6 and both threaten this bishop and checkmate on h8. And checkmate on h8. Okay, that's interesting. So what happens if g5? Well, I yeah. have options there. Maybe just take on g5 first, no? How is yeah. that? You shouldn't take the... I'm just you kidding. didn't take the bishop. Make it over. So here, here, g5, and then if he takes on g5 instead. That's something to look at, no? Pawn takes g5. But then I I'm could... not sure that works, though. Um, take this bishop. Mm-hmm. And once you take back, then he's no longer protecting the d5 pawn, so I could take with the rook. And then he has to go to f8, and then this is going to be checkmate. That's going to be checkmate, yes. What else do I have after g5? Well, I could just... No, but I don't have to open the g file, no? I can take the other way around. I can take uh, on e5 when you play g5. Yes. That's the other thing. That's also... And then you're also threatening the knight. But the knight is, of course, not so important if we're going to checkmate. Um, then I guess we would have to... There are some very interesting suggestions here. Yeah, okay. I'm going to look because <laughs> I think I can see. Uh, Bishop f8, that's what I've been looking at. Pierce is suggesting knight f5. Knight f5 is uh, uh, then because if he takes, then we get to open up the g file. That's actually interesting. Knight f5 is also Harris' suggestion. Um, I am Danish. <laughs> That's why we took Ben Larsen because he's also Danish. I just have a German last name. f5 is also possible after g5. Yeah, in your line. I think uh, yeah, means yeah. in your line. Yeah, it doesn't need to open. So that, maybe that's why knight f5 could be such an interesting idea because he would yeah let's see knight f5 how will hop is suggesting in in the twitch chat yeah that's also suggested yeah. in, uh, in twitch yeah so okay. what do we let's... have after knight f5 knight f5 okay so it comes with the threat of giving this check and then giving checkmate on h8. Yes, exactly. It's a pretty serious check. Uh, <laughs> so I guess he is going to have to take it. First thing to look at now, what happens if they take my knight? Because otherwise I could always just, I mean, it, that should be what's uh, critical. Yeah. And then question if is we sacrifice this one first. So <laughs> it's the check. So he takes. And then we take here and it's with check and he has to go here and then this would be checkmate. And that would be checkmate. Yes, bishop g7 also works, right? I had bishop e3 looked at or bishop just somewhere. Ah, yes. But, so just... but that should also work because let's see, knight f5 and the line you are looking at is this one. And here you are looking at bishop g7. The only option that I have is king g8, but I think you take, take on f5 and there's mate on h8, right? Yeah. If king g8 here and rook f8 is mate. And if they take on g7, then this is the mate. And rook h8, game over. And there is another line they could... Well, the other option that they have is king h7, so that bishop g7 yeah. uh, is not uh, check, right? But then bishop f8 would win a piece, right? Does it win a piece, bishop Maybe f8? Not. Maybe because you go king g8? King g8... Hmm. Something's hanging there, but maybe you can make it work? 
No, because if king g8, you can go back to g7, right? Bishop if, g7. But bishop g7 is just yeah. winning. Okay, so here you go, sorry, yeah. you go bishop f8, this was your initial idea, and I think it works. If I go king to g6, you want to take on e7 with check. And it looks like you, you get your pieces out, right? Yeah, but I think it's bishop g7 is good. It's just going to be checkmate, right? Here, bishop g7. Yeah. No, actually, this is why I asked about bishop uh, about king h7 because bishop g7 mm -hmm. does not lead to mate. Here, the king comes out, and it's, <laughs> it's so dangerous. And um, the king. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, okay. Okay. You'd still be winning probably here because you you take this bishop, but... Okay, I have this... Oh, here rook e7 was very interesting, I remember. Should be winning, but it's not so yeah. clear anymore, no? You still have to... Well, maybe uh, it's clear because you have the h-pawn that, that advances. And yeah. you're going to take on b2. But, um, okay, I like uh, bishop f8 here, seems fairly simple, knight e7, and here on king g5, bishop h6 is made. So that's I don't, nice. that's nice, yeah. So I don't have this, and if I don't have this, I have to take on e7, and then you can just take, no? Yeah, and we have a rook, that should be good enough. And that's a rook, yeah. And there is also mate, but you have to play... Not bishop g7, but bishop f4. Okay. And the idea is that you would follow up with uh, with g5 in case of king g8. Again, your <laughs> idea, no? And now we can't play f5. <laughs> no, <laughs> I have a knight on f5, very important. And if yeah. he takes on... Um... If he takes on e5? Yeah. I think I can take with the bishop and then threaten rook h8 mate. Yeah. I'm is... still opening everything. This should be should be winning. Everything wins here. Knight f5 is is the key in this position. Don't let the king escape, no? Yeah. Okay, let's see more then. Let's see here Larsen with black. Going to flip the board. Yes. I don't think I saw the move would have been very weird. I think I saw king f8, but I don't think it could be king f8 looking at the Sorry? <laughs> it's just because I, I thought I saw the move, but the move I saw was king f8, and I can't make sense. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was not what was going on. It's okay. not king f8, no. Okay. Really like the theme with the kings on the uh, rim here. <laughs> mm, okay. Okay, so this is just the position where black seems better, no? but you have to continue the, the attack. Yet. No, we haven't sacrificed anything yet. We we will get there <laughs> very soon. Good clue. I'll look at. <laughs> okay, so what's there to look at? Let's check here. Um, then he can take. Then maybe there are some trades. I'm not sure if we want to go into that. Could also maybe push f3, or we could just take it easy and get some more pieces into the game. Um, see. f3, take, 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 take. <laughs> so fade is what you're looking at. You are looking at contact yeah. g3. It's not the most. Um, it's not a very forcing move. No, but it makes sense. No, if you are going because the uh, white king uh, is a bit. Yeah, just preparing. Um, but maybe this would also make sense. And try to see if we can take here. But it feels like g1 is a pretty nice hiding square for the king then. <laughs> Unless we then have time to make this book go up. But it's <laughs> it's a very long. <laughs> very long plan, lots of moves. Uh, I'm gonna look in the chats and see for suggestions. Yeah. <laughs> uh, rook h5, yeah. I was rook h5 looks makes a lot of sense. E5, 
Oh, I didn't even consider G5, but that also looks nice. G5 is suggested by Pierce, Harish, uh, Vinash. Mm. Yeah, let's see, Trich. G5 makes a lot of sense as well, but... Yeah. Okay. Oh, about, uh, <laughs> uh, the Kremlin on, on, on Twitch. Um, yes, that's a problem with Twitch that I cannot fix and uh, we usually yeah. need some help for that to yeah, get the title changed directly in Twitch and we don't have access to that. So apologies okay. for everybody wanting to see Le Coangliem. It's not him today. No. Not now. <laughs> uh, and I can see Ohm style also says G5 and F3 is also. So a lot of the moves that I've been looking at, but not G5. So let's look at g5 because of course it's makes sense no the king is there mm. so he can't take no of course not <laughs> maybe then he could play f3 yeah something like that i was going to ask what the problem with g5 well problem not a huge problem but something with f3 no could be because yeah. this bishop on g4 is stuck slightly Ecstasy Sabarish says f3 then g5. That could be a way to avoid. So f3, then pawn takes, then. That's tempo, yeah? Then we take uh, back. Bishop takes. Rook I... takes. It's just... <laughs> Feels <sighs> like you're giving white some time to regroup, maybe, in that situation. Yeah, I feel like um... that. Maybe I have time to get out of there, king g2, and maybe bring my knight to... What if I play this and he plays f3 and we don't care and we just go here? Let's see that. Let's see g5 here. Sorry. Hey. Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to make this. Are you going to play the move? Or yes, you... there we go. Oh, g5. You, uh, refresh it? Yes. Yes, okay. So now we have to find out what happens if white goes for f3. Okay, what happens if white goes f3? Then we... <laughs> yeah, we, we just ignore it and take an h4. You just ignore it and take on h4, yes, because the yeah. king is... If we take here, if he takes here, we take on g3. And that's uh, winning. That's winning, yes, you are right. But first I'm going to give you this check. Yeah. Ah, okay. <laughs> just let me show the line. If f3, the, one, uh, the line that Sophie was showing is this one. Pawn takes, king g1, and then queen h2. Game over. But I have this intermediate check here. King h8, and now I'm going to play f3. And now it's different because you have g2. Or what? Because I'm going to take on f4, and then I have... Uh, I mean, you don't have that many checks, no? When you take on f4, I'm going to... When you take on h4, I'm going to take on f4. Ah, okay, yeah, then, then this pawn is kind of in my way. <laughs> I'm going to put my king on h1. Okay, a lot of pressure still, but... Yeah. Not getting mated yet. King goes to h1, maybe rook g1. Mm. Mm. So if you want to take an f4, maybe I should take on g3. Yeah, but queen takes, no? And then your bishop is hanging. I'm yeah. going to take with the queen. So, okay, this is complicated, no? Black still has many chances, but you have something better than this. And so here instead... Was g5, g5 is not the right move? Well, it's a good move, but it's not the best move. Uh. <laughs> the best move is rook h5 in this position. And now I think g5 is coming, yes? Yes. And what does white do here? It's not very clear. No. So here he gives a check, bishop d5 check, and the idea is to play bishop e6, leave the king open. If he takes on e6, queen takes e6, and then we have uh, we have g5. Mm. We're threatening g5, and he plays bishop f3 in the game. What are we going to do about our rook now? We're probably going to take an h4. <laughs> just but yeah. you, you can just sacrifice the rook, no? no but I mean, 
we can't, we don't have a whole lot of other options. I mean, then we should go to F5, but then I'm not sure. If no, you don't have many options, of course. But what I mean is that you have to calculate before just giving up the rope. No? <laughs> Then um, I guess he should go to g1. Yeah. Because if he goes to g2, we have bishop h3. And then what do we have? What do we have time for now? Can we make get this book into action? Making yes. like a book here? We can get that rook into action. Or we can get this. No, we can't really. The knight is harder to get into action. Maybe this way. No, but the piece you really need is the rook, right? Because that's the piece you need to mate. Yeah. So this is the piece that you need the most in this position, the rook from an a from a eight, and you have this nice maneuver here or to h six, to to mate the king. So rook h four does work here. This was the point. Queen takes king g one. And, and here, rook. okay. Let's see. What do we play here? How do we make it work? Okay, maybe we play uh, because we could also go for bishop h3. Yeah, that's also there. And then queen g5. Have you have you played the moves? No, I'm waiting for you to decide. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm so, checking. I was just checking the chat to see if we have any suggestions. Okay, uh, bishop h3 is also looking good and if it goes yeah if it goes here then queen g5 should end the game right yeah you know way to defend that so if we go bishop h3 uh he can't really i mean i don't even think we want to take an f1 if we can still go well then the bishop is of course maybe we want to take an f1 maybe we just want to keep the threat and then go with the rook yeah, I think the idea is always to bring the rook. So you have bishop h3 is what he played. So Danish people think alike here. <laughs> <laughs> bishop h3 was planned, uh, played by Larsen, but queen g5 is also very strong. And I saw it suggested in the chat, queen g5, because you want the king cut first. No, If you are going to bring the rook, I really need this king to stay where it is. And yeah. then I'm going to mate on the h file. Because if I go rook f8 first, then maybe he... He can try to escape. Maybe he can try something like bishop g2 and f3. Yeah, okay. No, here maybe like this and play f3. Try to to get yeah. out. Although it's going to be difficult. Maybe we can even play f3 here. Yeah, maybe f3 and then... Okay, this should probably be winning as well, but um, we still have to find many more good moves. With queen g5, this is much clearer, no? Much easier. Rook f8 followed by rook f6. Rook g1 doesn't help because this is mate. Nothing to do here. Oh, and <laughs> and then... The... Sorry? That um, checkmate with the queen on h3? Yes. Where the king can't go to uh, g1 or f2. Isn't that called the wolf? Oh, I, I had no idea. I don't know. Maybe. I can't go to like these squares where like these and these squares, then it's called a wolf because it's like wolf ears. But if it's uh, like if the queen had been on uh, g3 and those were the squares the king couldn't go to, it would be Mickey Mouse. Really? This is the yeah. first time I hear that. Squares <laughs> if they are like uh, on the same file align or if they are like diagonals, then it's called wolf or Mickey Mouse. That's really nice. Can anybody tell us if they've heard about that? Something. It's the first time I hear that. <laughs> yeah. It's really nice. I'm going to remember that. Yeah, it's, it's a nice way to... I don't know what it's useful for, but it's just nice to like have some pattern or things to remember by. Yes, I agree. <laughs> and hi, hi. I'm in, uh, I'm in Bologna right now in Italy. I'm just sitting in my kitchen here. <laughs> yes. Okay, okay, so here I was going to tell you that if rook h1, this is the other try to kind of <laughs> run here somewhat, somehow like that. Rook f6. Yeah. And here, bishop g2, this is an important move. Rook g6 first. 
Ah, because then he has to put something on G1. If he plays, if he puts something on G1, yes, then it's going to be made on H6. He can yeah. try Queen F1. Mm. And this is something that I wanted to show you because it's very beautiful. We have a very strong idea here, which is F3 again. We want to open the F4 square for for the queen. Yeah. And here is the point. Pawn takes F3. I'm going to give you some minutes to find the next move. Maybe you want to to find the immediate win. I thought it was dove and swallow tail. Okay, <laughs> the mate. Someone uh, else about swallow tail. Okay. Well, or maybe yeah. Dove tail, dove and swallow. Maybe it's just what you, we call it in in Denmark. <laughs> <laughs> you know, different countries and languages have different um, words for it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, dove... some, somebody else confirming about dove, dovetail in in Twitch, but new stuff about Mickey Mouse and wolves. Yes. <laughs> Okay, uh, let's see. So a lot more fun, I think. Your names. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Maybe it's something you teach children so they can. Remember. I think so. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we could go for the check here. Uh, then he has to go back here, and then I don't see anything that's winning. Okay, the YouTube chat's on fire. <laughs> they are on fire. Twitch as well. Yes, own style has it. We Charlie. Avinash, bishop h3, and boom, he says, yes. <laughs> bishop h3. That's so nice, yeah? Uh, because then we go... Uh, then we go queen f4. That is nice. I really wanted to show this. I yeah. thought it's a, it's, a, it's a fun way to win the game here. Oh, I don't know what this is called. These are the spurs. <laughs> No, this uh, uh, this was a type of etouffee mate, but I don't uh, I don't recall the particular name. Uh, no, epaulette mate. This is the epaulette, yes. And you can have it with two pieces this way. You can have it with the pieces on the on the file or on the on the rank. Okay. But they had different names. I just know it at epaulette mate. <laughs> Either way. Nice one. So here rook g1 can be played, but then you still go here. No, can never take the bishop because it's made on h6. Here would be made, and here will be also almost made. <laughs> Queen h4, oh. and that's made. Just when you thought you could maybe <laughs> escape. No, no way. Queen h1 is coming. Yeah. Very, very nice ideas here, but they were not played. So let me show you bishop h3 instead. <laughs> the Danish move. The Danish move, yes. And the point, <laughs> the point of bishop h3 is not to take the rook, but play rook f8 anyway. And he yeah. basically takes the idea of bishop g2, no? Yeah. Here white lost pretty fast. It's very difficult to find any type of defense here, no? As queen e2, rook f6. He gave a check, but king f8. And that's that. Was there any point in going to f8 and not h8? I don't think so. Okay. Just to be provocative, maybe. <laughs> yeah, just to make sure you're not getting mated first on the back rank, maybe. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> yeah, king f8 he played and then rook g6 is coming. So here, here he resigned. Okay, let's see more because this is just the beginning. <laughs> it's good that like we can see that he could attack. Instead. Of course he could attack, yes. He just doesn't have these crazy attacks and crazy king hands because this is what our lessons are about. And king hands are not so common, let's say. There no. are some, some good attacks. Well, here uh, Larson is white and I wanted to show you from this position where it's black to play uh, because here he plays knight c5 and knight c5 is uh, the move that allows everything. Uh, it looks like a normal move because knight c5 wants to go for d3. That's it even the... looks like a good move. <laughs> it even looks like a good move, but it's not. And now we're going to see why. I'm not going to spoil this for you. <laughs> so I'm going to flip it. Yes, it's white to play here. Let's try to find some some moves for white. How would you continue here? First, first things first. What do we do? 
Um. <laughs> so many checkmate patterns today. Yes, yeah, it yeah. looks like we are learning about checkmate patterns. <laughs> I mean, I almost just want to go queen g4. Uh, makes a lot of sense. No, it's like the sense. move. There are some themes with this bishop being really, really strong and. Um, I don't think we should do anything to prevent knight d3. Yeah. Most people will see a way to uh, prevent it, but also like we should probably just uh, focus on the king side. Yeah. Um, so queen g4, he definitely can't go jump with the knight. So he has to do something about uh, this before. Uh, he could go g6 or he could go bishop. g6 is what he played yeah okay i don't know about bishop f6 i think maybe we could take and go knight h5 or maybe just knight h no not h5 straight away hmm. so if you take he takes back We could go here, but then we could maybe go here and try to exchange the queens. Yeah, that's what I I was afraid of. Yeah. 96, I think. Does 96 work as well? I thought we have a 5 on 96 in this position. Knight e6 now? Instead of uh, bishop f6? But I think 96, then we it's have not... a 5, no? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think a five may uh, does it yeah. wins the piece. But I'm a little annoyed with the bishop f6 move. But there must be some reason why it's not. Um... Yes, and here it will be about the knight on c5. <laughs> ah. So. Yeah, I mean, the knight is hanging, then if we take, but. Uh, so we should take here, maybe? And then if he takes here, take here? Um, okay, I guess we can do it that way as well. But I was thinking take on f6 first, and then you do the and rest. Then and then take on, C on d5. Yeah. Yes, exactly, Piyush. Everything revolves about the fact that the knight cannot go to f6. And basically, the knight is away from the king now. No, in this position, I think if we go one move back where we started i think bishop f6 was maybe a move worth considering mm. in in this position just to annihilate this bishop on on b2 but knight c5 we, you also get here for in the way of tactics because we see that the knight might be hanging and here we see it in this line on bishop f6 bishop takes queen takes and now c takes d5 and we already win some material here I don't know. Can you see it on the board, Sophie? Yeah, I can see it on the board. Okay. Yeah, so now we also get the pawn on, on c6, right? Yeah, looks right. Here, knight h5 is the other move that Sophie was looking at, and queen g6 is a bit annoying, but I think here you can still go for pawn takes d5. No, you haven't ruined anything yet. Yeah, but maybe it's a little less good because... You don't need to do it, no? Maybe the knight can go to f5 later. You don't yeah. you don't have to play this. Yes, of course. Okay, so what else is here? Bishop f6, maybe bishop f8, but still the knight on c5 will be hanging. Oh, it's kind of... This bishop on f8 is overloaded, so we can take. And yeah. the knight is hanging. We want to play rook c5. Because of the, of the mating ideas on g7 yeah okay so in the game he played g6 oh why not f6 was a question here i forgot about that why not f6 because on f6 we play knight h5 i think yes we play knight h5 and now g7 is hanging and f6 will be hanging as well because this is pinned here. So for example, bishop f8, I can simply take on f6. I just have to decide how. Knight f6, I think. No? Take with the, uh, maybe taking it. Oh yeah, that's With the bishop you want to take? 
Yes, because G7, no? <laughs> you can take either way here. Maybe Queen D7. This is very good. No, either way, this is this is winning. Knight F6 or Bishop F6, uh, whichever you prefer, they both win. So F6 doesn't work because of Knight H5. And let's see what happened after G6, which was played in the game. What would you play here? Something <laughs> on <laughs> I think. Um, yeah. I mean, pawn f5 shouldn't be bad. No, it shouldn't be bad. It should be the first move uh, we think about, no? Let's open up this f file and just ruin his king side. Uh, also, I mean, knight f5 could be an option. Knight f5? Yeah. You just want it... to mate him on h6? <laughs> yeah. Almost. <laughs> But it's, it's, yeah, I think f5 is nicer because it opens up the book. Um, if I play f5 and he plays knight d3, I think the, the idea is maybe to keep the bishop and not the rook. So what do we play here? Yes, g6 is a hook, as Atarva is pointing out, and it should make us think uh, already about using yeah. them. Yeah, maybe we could take on g6 first, because he can't take, if we take on g6, he can't take anywhere here, because we take here and it's uh, it's both a, a check and threatens the rook. Okay, so, so you want to take here, and you are right yeah. about this, I shouldn't be getting greedy here, because you're going to simply mate me. Yeah. Pawn takes on f7, and that's mate. Um, Knight takes b2, I think, runs into the same thing. No? One takes yeah. f7 is made. So what if I'm just going to take back here on g6? Now we have uh, an open <laughs> book. And we have... What do we have? Let's see. Okay. On style has it. <laughs> Who on has Twitch? it? On Twitch. On style. Yeah. On style. Yes, Le, uh, Liam Le Kwang <laughs> looks very different today because we couldn't change the title on Twitch. Yeah, sorry. So <laughs> it's Raluca and Sophie today. Rook takes F7. I, I, I think that looks nice. But let's see. That's the thing we've. A theme for today we should think about it before we <laughs> sacrifice our rook even though always it's always yes <laughs> okay so we take and it's if he takes anything on b2 or c2 we take on g6 uh, with the queen and it's going to be checkmate so he has to take an f6 f7 yeah um then then what then we bring the other rook on the f file i suppose uh-huh and here he is in a little bit of trouble, I think, because he can't go anywhere in this diagonal. And if he goes to g8, we're going to take on g6 with the queen. But maybe he can then, instead of moving the king, he can... Maybe we should... Can we... Tr no, no, it's just not that we <laughs> had to uh, move the pieces, but I just... Uh, yeah, you're right about this. This is all correct. Bishop f6. And now... Why rook f7? Because we want to break open the king here. But of course we could just take that bishop, right? Of course, yeah. And that's what he did. Bishop uh, takes f6, it's game over. Yeah. He has because, to take... Sorry, yeah. No, it's just because, I mean, black has some um, material for the queen, but... I don't I mean, think I... that's enough. No, he has two rooks, but the He's king is still... Oh, wait, 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 wait. Do I have anything better here? Like, yes, I do have something better. I have queen d7. Is that better? I think so, because okay. I'm winning uh, some more material, yes. Rook e7. I'm gonna take here. I want here. to take here on... Here. Yes. Right. No, yeah. I want this way, yeah. Yeah, first there. <laughs> 
queen c6 and, I, and then I get the rook on a8. Mm. Oops, not really that way. <laughs> Getting the rook on a8 and that's not so much material anymore. Wait, tell me, what else is here? No, queen d7 does the trick, yes? I could take on f6, but then, yeah, the two rooks. No, maybe it's not so easy to, to break free. And here about rook f7, we just we just see this idea with queen g6. The dark squares are all, all weak here, and we are trying to use them. Mm. Okay, good. Let's see. Let's see another game here. I think it will be the last one. There's a game against Karpov that I liked a lot, and I included here. Uh, just one second, yeah. Larson is black, so here we have this position that I am going to let you think about. And it's white to play? It's black to play. It's Carpo versus Larson. A very interesting game. Carpo was better, but here he just played bishop g3, I think, and uh, he starts losing some of the advantage around here. Okay, sorry, what was White's uh, cap of last move? Bishop g3? Bishop g3, I think it was his last move, yes. It's such a weird... <laughs> it's not a weird, but it's... No, no, it's just... So, uh, like, pieces all together and... Like, from the look of it, I prefer White's position, <laughs> but... There must be something because there. he has more space, but on the other hand, the pieces are not really ready, no? Uh, they are not on the king's side. No, that's true. Could, uh, but could I mean, be overextended. About these pieces on the back rank and... Um... <laughs> I think this is such a hard position. Maybe f6 or f5, just to open up a little bit that's really yeah. nice you, you see it from uh, from the beginning like is directly f6 is what he played and i think is one of the best moves here no h5 Bec somebody is h5 doesn't look as logical to me at all the thing about h5 is that i think i think you open your king too much don't you yeah. like if yeah. i take on h6 you're going to get in the way of rook g4. If you play h5 here, I was thinking about taking and rook g4, no? Yeah. I think it I'm not sure it. about that. My piece is getting. Hmm. But f6. f6 is what he played. I like this move a lot, no? Because here, let's see. Um, a lot of space, no? h4 and g5, this looks menacing. He wants to attack us. There's a great knight on e5. This rook on e4 is ready to jump. But there are still some pieces that are not participating. And we have everybody here. I mean, here we should not be afraid because we have many defenders. And if the position opens, this king on g2 will become weak. So it makes sense to play f6 and try to get our pieces in. Now, for example, here there are some interesting options. If pawn takes f6... Uh, the idea was to take with the G pawn, yeah? Yeah, so the rook can go on G7. On G7, yes. This is a, a nice idea. Like, for example, if the knight drops back, then you're going to go rook G7, probably. Hmm. But rook G4 is interesting here. The point is that here you have to play rook G7. If you go king H8, then you're not really threatening to take on E5 anymore. Because when you take bishop takes e5, oh, uh, yeah. it's going to be made. So white has time to bring some pieces. For example, queen d2 here. Queen is coming to h6. And it becomes unclear. I think white, white gets in the game here. Queen h6, yeah. maybe the other rook to g1. Move over to the h file. And, uh, and get ready for the attack. So we play rook g7 here. Let's say they take, and here white can, well, white has to play energetically here, because if he plays something like knight f3 again, we'll probably have uh, enough time to activate our pieces. Something like knight g6 would be an idea here, yeah? Mm. Maybe use the square f4 somehow, and the pawn on h4 can also be attacked. 
Maybe I can even get my knight to f5. <laughs> Just now in case he plays h5, maybe I want this. Yeah. Uh, but there is one very strong move here, for example, rook g1. I'll just give up the knight and uh, and play for the initiative. It's not clear at all. It's not the kind of position that you say I'm going to sacrifice the knight and mate you. It's the kind of position where you play for compensation and try to to get the initiative. The computer yeah. is very helpful as usual in these positions. <laughs> uh, he gives us a 0 0.00. Ah, okay. It's, it's all very clear. <laughs> Maybe not a dead draw, but it is... <laughs> it's just, yes, it's all clear. It's equal. Nothing to see here. I don't see how it's equal. I think in a game this would be just a I lot to play for, no? <laughs> a point for one of the sides. A full point for either black or white. I think so. I think anybody can can make a mistake. And I think both sides need to find precise moves. For example, here, if black takes, maybe this will the balance will will go in white's favor. Yeah. Slightly. So this was one option, rook g4, pawn takes f6. But in the game, Karpov played knight f3. This is also possible. Go back, and now what do we do? How are we going to follow up here? But isn't white winning? No, he's not winning. <laughs> he's... Uh, but aesthetically, he, he looks... looks <laughs> It's like what you say, things are not always how they... How they seem, yeah. Um, I think this is... I mean, it should be very important. <laughs> What's okay here? I think, yeah. I'm looking at taking a g5 or playing f5. Um, if I take on g5, he can maybe take back with the knight. Yeah. Then I can't play rook f7 immediately, then I would have to like push h3 first, h6 first, and I'm not sure if I, if I like that. Um, f5 looks more... maybe not logical, but <laughs> it comes with a threat, so the rook will have to go somewhere. Probably back, right? Because if he goes to e5, then Bishop c7 should be good. Yes, yeah, I think rook e1. Goes retreat somehow. But would you play a five here in this position? No, I'm not. I'm not, <laughs> I'm, I'm not a big fan of a five, no? Open up on the king side, but I also. I'm also not so happy about taking on. And I can't play e5, can I? One, two, three, four, no. I don't think I'm not sure. Play. I think I'm gonna look in the chat. Might be too much. <laughs> Bishop c7 was suggested by Charlie, and I like that move. For example, no, why not improve our pieces here? What move? Bishop c7. Oh yeah, Bishop c7 looks. Because you want logical. to weaken the the square f4, you want to get some some pieces in. The bishop on d8 is not doing anything. So here is about improving, and then yes, you can think about taking on g5, and we have various moves. Uh, bishop c7 is one of them. Yeah, both Harris and Roland are suggesting e5, which I thought couldn't be played, but maybe it's maybe it can. Maybe we don't care about sacrificing a pawn. Uh, it's a difficult game now. It's very. I think it's very difficult. It's very difficult. Yes. Um, it's uh, which maybe sacrifice. both have to play carefully. Is real boy suggesting? Okay, so people are rooting a little bit for e5. I'm not sure what happens, but we can look at it. I haven't yeah. considered it here. So what is the point of an e5? We want to open the queen, but where is the queen getting? Not to h3, not to g4 for now. So can I take on e5 is the question. That's the first thing to look at. What happens now after I take? What is the point? Just take back? I'm going to take, right? Yeah. So what are we doing here? What maybe is our we, idea? Bishop c7 afterwards. Bishop c7 in this position? Or maybe we take an e5 first and then play bishop c5. 
c7, sorry. We could also play bishop c7 here because the pawn is pinned. Uh, yeah. But take on f6, I'm kind of opening my my king, am I not? What do I do here? Bishop c7. Maybe just rook e1 is another idea that I have. Yeah, defending the pawn and the rook. Yeah, I don't like my rook hanging there. How about rook e1 here? f5 is also being suggested after. Uh, when? Uh, like after playing, so playing e5, white takes, and then here. going. Mm. Ah, because you basically you didn't want to allow me 95 ideas and okay. But f4 is not happening or is it happening? Do you have a... Oh, I see. So you want f4. I get it. You want f4, you want me to take with the bishop and then you want to win a piece. Is that it? <laughs> I think this is the idea, yeah? f4 here. And when I take, this is going to win me a piece. Ah. This is the idea, right? Nice but I'm, idea. I'm not going to do that. Eh? <laughs> First of all, because I think I can play rookie one and here take with the knight. And then I'm going to drop back to g3. Knight takes, bishop takes, queen g4, bishop g3. Yeah. Okay, and I have a pawn on e5. You can take on b4, but I'm not sure if if I like black's position there. It's, it feels great. What would Morphe do? <laughs> what would he do? I don't know. <laughs> what do you guys think? I think here it's, uh, it's not easy, no? For black. I don't like this position very much. No. I don't either, but I didn't even I didn't even like the position to begin with. Um, but I can I, yeah I, it shouldn't be. Doesn't look like e five is going to work, no? D five. And what do we do here? F takes g five was something Harish was suggesting, but I don't know if here F takes g five. We have two people suggesting knight e six on uh, Twitch, but I'm not sure if, if you mean knight e six after e5 or before e we couldn't play it before e. <laughs> here no instead of taking on g5 96 yeah but if 96 okay so the point is that 96 i don't have e takes f6 because of knight f4 this is the point right pawn takes e6 you want to play knight f4 but no knight f4 i take with the knight and i'm i'm defended i'm defending my no not really Take on e4. I'm still think I still think I'm much better here. Take on d5. I have like a million pawns for the for the exchange, right? Yeah. I think I can do this. <laughs> Told you white was winning. Yes, white is winning now, I think. <laughs> now white is winning. Now white is, might be winning. I think e5 looks unnecessary here we don't have to go into these complications nothing is happening to us here why do we go crazy e5 is a move that uh, either wins or loses i don't think there is uh, <laughs> anything here no okay we have a saying in romania and that's either to the ball or to the hospital so <laughs> it's either to the ball or to the hospital or to the hospital yes oh that's such a nice uh... <laughs> kind of but i think we are going to the hospital here after e5 I don't think we're going to the ball. <laughs> so no, here we need to keep improving. We don't, it's not really the time for e5 here. So he goes rook f7. So he was talking about taking on g5 and that's not a bad idea, but the rook on e7 gets stuck if we do that right away. Uh, okay. So we have time for rook f7 then take on g5, open our rook and maybe play on the f5. Now he yeah. can take on f6, of course, this is still possible, but here I think we can already take um, in many ways. We can take with the rook, since we have the rook on f7. No? Here? Mm. Maybe get our rook out, but g takes f6 
should also work. It's kind of a version that of the line we were seeing before, but uh, but improved. Because the knight is no longer on e5, so that's that's one thing that's good for us. So in the game he went for queen d2, trying to bring the queen over, and now pawn takes g5. Finally. Yeah. Now he takes with the knight. Not sure why with the knight though, because here pawn takes g5 also makes sense. And maybe it was even better, no? Because now I have the h file for rook h1. Yeah. Knight because... g5, sorry, yeah. When it takes with the knight, do we want to use our bishop on that knight? No, we're not... he didn't take on g5. We could take on g5 as well. Um, but he played rook f5 here. Knight g5 is a tempo move, kind of looks at e6, but it's not enough. e6 is well defended for now. Mm. So here he plays rook a3. And what are we going to do here? How do we continue this? We're already in a more comfortable position here, aren't we? It's less great. Okay, so this rook is happy. This knight is also pretty happy. <laughs> Yep. This knight is not so happy, but it is protecting e6, but that's not, I don't think that's enough to make it happy, no? <laughs> <laughs> uh, so maybe we could get this knight into action somehow, like we could go here and here, uh, threatening this rook, or maybe going here, or, yeah, and also this bishop is, I think bishop c7 is still there. Mm -hmm. Okay, but how? Do, okay, here you have to think about how you want to arrange your pieces, no? Because it's time for you to improve them. All four of them are badly placed on the back rank. So how do we want them? Where do we want them? Where would we like to have them? And then we see if we can make it work. Yeah. Okay, so if we could get our knight here to. I mean, there are many. It wasn't really nice to have a knight on c4, but it's hard to get oh. to c4. <laughs> but that's not yeah, really right. where you're playing, no? No, no, I agree. It would just be a nice square. But okay. <laughs> maybe we could get this knight to. Uh, maybe just to f6 to begin with, and this bishop could be traded, and this queen. Where do we want our queen? That's a good. We probably want it somewhere over here. Maybe we want the queen on on g6. Yeah, somewhere around there. I, I'd like it on the queen side as on the king side as well. Yeah. This rook maybe supporting the other rook in the f file. The other rook needs to be on the f file. But what are you going to do about the knight on f6 then? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so the knight and then the knight should not be on f6. Then the knight can just be on. Um, then either the knight should just go straight to g6. Uh huh. Why to g6? So it's not in the way. <laughs> way of the books, and maybe we even want to push push e5. But that's like a whole other idea. But because e6 is constantly weak, so if we could play knight g6 and e5 it would uh... but i'm not sure we want to play e5 here no mm. i think here we want to play on the f file because how do we how are we going to to look at this so we don't care about e6 falling it's it's defended for now right so it is nothing is going to happen no but here we see that the the white king is slightly weakened what else? What else is weak in White's position? What it's weakness? Good. That's where, yes. F3 is weak. And yeah. then there is this pawn on F2. But is that really weak? It is a little bit maybe, but it's just... It's defended, like... yes, I agree. It's well defended, but it's something that we could attack in the future, right? Yeah. Maybe if we if we get enough pieces, if you had the idea of bishop c7 
well, if you trade the bishop on g3, then f2 is not going to be that well protected. And then this square is really juicy, no? The knight on yeah. f4. I'd really love a knight on f4. If I can make it there. Yeah. <laughs> so knight g6 has the idea of knight of getting to f4 eventually as well. You also look at h4, which is another pawn that can be attacked. So this is how he starts here. Knight g6 first. Here he played... Well, we have... Do we have a threat? I was going to say that we want to take on h4, but bishop takes h4 and it looks like that's not a real threat, no? No, we're not threatening to take on h4, but maybe we do want to play h6 next and kick the knight out on bishop c7. And rook to f8. h6 and rook to f8 could be an idea. Mm. So I don't lose my pawn on e6. So he goes knight f f3 directly, no? Maybe yeah. knight e5 is happening. And then we can play rook f8 immediately. Yeah. Knight e5. Remove the knight. He takes here with the rook. What do we play? Mm, rook f3. Yes, rook f3. We don't want to trade rooks there. We're going to need our rook, right? Yeah, they're in the open file. Yes, we needed to attack f2. He plays rook a1 here. The rook on a3 was never really great, no? I'm, I'm really not sure what, what the idea of rook a3 was. Um, probably defending against a threat on the third rank that I, I must have missed. Yeah. He plays rook a1 now, trying to bring the rook back. And what are we going to do? Bishop c7 looks very Bish good. I agree. Bishop c7 is a good move, but you have something better. Okay. It's Bishop c7 is like the second best. <laughs> if Bishop c7 what? Is the second best, I think. Okay. It's Bishop c7. <laughs> uh, so... Okay, I don't think it's another bishop move. Unless it's bishop... No, it's not bishop f6. Or is it bishop f6? Just can look at it because you can't take the rook because we can take either here. We can even go bishop g5 and pick up the queen. Uh, bishop bishop f6. Then he must move the rook and probably also defend on d4. So he could go like this. Then maybe after that the bishop is a little bit misplaced on f6. Yeah, you might have to move it again. So what other mm. candidates do we have here? We could get the queen into action, but I just think it takes a while. I mean, then we should play queen here and here. That's an idea, and you have something more directly. With the queen? <laughs> <laughs> no, as an idea, I mean. Yeah. Mm. No, I'm going to look in the chat now. <laughs> yes, we, we have some very good suggestions here in the, tag, in the chat. H4? No, I think these are... No, no, bishop h4 here is, the, is okay, being suggested. Bishop h4 rook d3 interesting ah you want to take on d3 and then take on h4 or the other way around take the other way around yeah and d3 bishop h4 just wins the pawn yeah and let's show it bishop takes h4 this is very pretty here rook takes d3 and knight f4 well, that's a nice one that's a nice one yeah yeah if he takes but he didn't take, of course. Bishop takes h4, but that's one pawn for us. An important pawn. And we get to trade the bishop. <laughs> exactly what we were wishing. Always so, one. Yeah. Well, he plays queen e2. Now, of course, he takes here. Pawn to hg3. How do we continue? 
Mm. <laughs> Knight takes b4 looks good, but I'm not sure if it's stacking too much material. Probably is. <laughs> What's the idea? Knight takes b4? Uh, it's to go rook here, but I think then oh. he's getting two rooks and knights. Probably way too much. Yeah. Um, we could feel like it's soon time to. I mean, is he is he threatening to take on on f three? I don't know. <laughs> Is that something I always find it hard to like? Because I think I prefer the queen over two rooks, but. Yeah, I agree. Uh, yeah. I think uh, he might want to take on f3 now, but. Then I say. But you do have. Yeah. You play queen e8, and you don't mind about them taking on f3, right? I don't think I mind. Um, I also have, I think this is, uh, I think the queen is going to be strong in these positions. Because the king is vulnerable. Yeah, and I still have the knight to like, uh, cooperate with the queen. Yeah, I think the queen will be strong here. Um, so you can play queen e8, the point is to bring the last piece, no? You have the queen that's not really taking part, she's far away from the action. And you have many ways to do so. You you have queen e8. He played queen d7 in the game. The idea is to play queen f7 next. Yeah. And then finally play knight b4 maybe, <laughs> and rook f2. Uh, but I think queen d7 was also preparing for queen takes f3, and you'll see why. Now he takes. And what do we do now? So, because the queen is on d7 and not on e8, she's kind of, she's pointing towards the d4 pawn, which is holding a lot of white stuff together. Yeah. <laughs> so, moving the knight somewhere. <laughs> um, not sure where it's, I mean, could we take here? Knight take, queen takes. Um, and maybe he can. Yeah, I think that should be working because that works. Here, then we can go queen here, check and pick up this rook instead. Yes. So I think he's taken on b4. Yeah, that's the point. Knight takes b4, and you get some more pawns. And let's show this line. Knight takes b4, queen d4. So everything's hanging now, no? Here, here, and here. If he defends the rook, then we take on b4. And here I try to see if maybe white can get a perpetual, but no, because we play queen c5 and we defend e7. So the only check that he's going to get is rook e8 and no more rook e7 because I'm going to take. Yeah. So this doesn't work. And you are looking at knight c6 here, but I think I take on a1 directly, right? That's true, I don't know why. If knight c6. You can give a check if you want to, but I think we can just take on a1. <laughs> yeah. No, he played rook to d1 in the game and queen d4 anyway. Just yeah. this works. Rook e4, and here he plays. Well, what do you play here? You don't have that many moves. Queen c3? So the knight is not hanging? No, but is don't... Hanging. it is hanging, yes? I take with the rook. Uh, then we could go... Okay, then we have to be <laughs> force, forcing. Uh, so we could maybe give a check here. Uh, then he could go in between with the... Yeah. Okay, so... Look at four is the move. Yeah. So what do we do here? Okay, you have a nice move. Not difficult, but... <laughs> have a move that defends everything. Okay, queen c3 is being suggested, but queen c3 only pins the knight, so he can yeah. take with the rook. Queen... <laughs> I think queen d5, right? Because yeah. then the rook, and if the knight takes, I take on d1. That's right. So you pin both pieces now, and nobody can take your, your knight on b4 anymore. Yeah. He played here, knight f2, but this is... This is okay. King g2, and knight comes back on d5. He took on e6. 
make a Luft for the king. <laughs> Put the king on h7, just make sure that nobody's going to check him. And now he starts pushing b4. White played g4 here and queen g5. No, nothing. Not really a chance for counterplay for white. The knight no. on d5 is doing a great job. He tried here. And now he played queen to c4. Okay. It's getting ready to one. Yes, b3 is coming. Mm. g5 and here he plays h5. Yeah. Not so easy. H5 has to be played. Huh? It's You don't have that many moves here because otherwise the king gets open. If you allow pawn takes just h6, it can become dangerous, I think. He wants to take here and rook f7, so you always have to watch out for the opponent's counterplay. Mm. But h5 is fine. And then if he plays g6, we just need to not go to h8. Yes. <laughs> That's the only thing to, to be careful there. You go king h6. Can't go to g8, actually. Okay, no, he still had a few tricks, obviously. Yes, of course. He's yeah. Karpov, no? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rook e8 and yeah. now h4. So somebody is asking that in it's Karpov versus uh, Larsen. Larsen. Yeah, that's true. King g2 and now run. Yeah. So you see, it's not really a king hand, but it did start as a king hand. <laughs> and now queen e2. 93 this is going to end in checkmate in the end so so here white resigned the point is he takes on f2 no if king moves on f3 i mean sorry and it's going to be game over and with this is going to be lesson over for us <laughs> there are many other good games of larsen sorry almost mickey mouse uh... almost yeah that's true <laughs> the queen needed to be on e1 right yeah I got the pattern, okay. In here. <laughs> to make the ears, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and, well, we're going to end it for today. And next week we are going to look at a very strong player. I'm really excited about it. We're going to look at Nona Gaprindashvili. At who? Nona Gaprindashvili. Oh. Great. She's a, a very good attacking player. She has many, many nice games. Many wins against strong players. First woman to become a grandmaster. So we're going to have a lot of fun, I think. Why can't you block with rook? I think that's not about this position, right? What is? If you guys have any questions, we are here. Well, a few more, a couple more minutes to answer. Thank you, everybody, for joining us. <laughs> yeah, we'll be on next week. We'll be on next week. Um, well, Tata still also starts next week, so we'll have to see if we're, we're going to announce if it's going to be on the same day, but we will keep you posted. Yes. Is Raluca Romanian? Yes, Raluca is Romanian. <laughs> and Sophie, she's Danish. <laughs> it's been discussed too many times. Yes, she's no longer from Netherlands. <laughs> <laughs> For a brief moment in time. You changed yeah. country. Yes. Now we can go back to work. Yeah, I think so. Everybody goes back to work now. And the next lesson should be in a week at the same time. In a week at the same time, but it might be on Wednesday if Sophie is available. I'm available. Because of Tata still. So then it's going to be a Wednesday, on Wednesday, guys, not on Tuesday at 3 p.m. CET. Yes. Thank you very much for joining our stream and hope to see you soon. <laughs>